Welcome you to the house of the Lord on this Epiphany Sunday as we gather to worship our Lord and Savior and to celebrate the manifestation of Jesus as he made himself known to the world. We open our service with a call to worship, the verse of the Magi, where they said, we have, come, we have seen his star and we have come to worship him. Lord Jesus, we have indeed come to worship you. We pray that you'd open our hearts, that you would speak afresh to us. We thank you that you have come to us and that you bring us to yourself. We open this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our order of service continues as printed there in the bulletin. Let us pray together the prayer that is printed. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. And let us humbly kneel and make confession unto God, imploring his forgiveness through our Lord Jesus Christ. O God, our Heavenly Father, I confess unto thee that I have grievously sinned against thee in many ways, not only by outward transgressions, but also by secret thoughts and desires, which I cannot fully understand, but which are all known unto thee. I do earnestly repent, and am heartily sorry for these my offenses. And I beseech thee of thy great goodness to have mercy upon me, and for the sake of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to forgive my sins and graciously to help my infirmities. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us. And for the sake of the sufferings, death, and resurrection of his dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, forgives us all our sins. As a minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you who do truly repent and believe in him the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the other hand, by that same authority, I declare unto the impenitent and unbelieving that so long as they continue in their impenitence, God has not forgiven their sins, and will assuredly visit their iniquities upon them if they turn not from their evil ways and come to true repentance and faith in Christ ere the day of grace be ended. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us please stand together and share the peace of the Lord.
Our introit for this Epiphany Sunday is print in the bulletin. Let us read that together responsibly. Behold, the Lord, the ruler, has come. Give the king your judgments, O God. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson is printed there in the bulletin. It's from Isaiah chapter 55, which is the sermon text this morning. Isaiah the prophet writes, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you did not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Here ends our Old Testament reading. Our gradual reading this morning, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Alleluia, alleluia. We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Alleluia. Holy Gospel lessons from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Reading in Jesus' name. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, Some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Here ends our gospel lesson. On this Communion Sunday, let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, Very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation 
came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. It's a joy to see each of you here this morning. A special welcome to those visiting with us today as well. Uh, we're, we're delighted to have Jen's father with us now. We've had my father for a few days, and now uh, uh, Jen's father's with us, and we're just grateful to have family visiting us during this time as well. I just invite everyone to take the Red Friendship folder and to sign that and to um, pass it down to those next to you as well who might have a record of your participation in worship service this morning. I want to thank the Kurtzes for the flowers on the altar and uh, 50 years that they've been member at uh, members at, at Ruth Fred. That's wonderful. Praise God uh, for that. And just pray that, um, yeah. Church's blessing to, to each one who's who's member and who's uh, in, involved here at, at Ruther. That is our, our prayer as we grow together in, in the Lord. If you did not pick up your poinsettia and you would like to, or probably at this point, even if you uh, didn't purchase one but would like one, there's a few left downstairs, and if you're quick, you can go get one after the service and enjoy a few more days of beauty from those. But we're so grateful to have those uh, in the sanctuary and just the beauty that we've had over the Christmas season that way. Uh, New Year's Eve, uh, we had a wonderful time here, and some of you saw some of the postings on Facebook as well, too, on our church page that way, but a great time of community and, and fellowship together as a church body. I just want to also note that uh, reading through the Bible, 2020, uh, year of the Bible, actually every year should be the year of the Bible, right? But uh, reading through, and we have, I think, over 70 people who are reading through together online on the Bible app there, and there's a wonderful little devotional piece that goes with it each day, and then the chapters to read that day, and then you can also talk it over. So there's ongoing dialogue uh, between all of these, these folks, and it's just been delightful to see the different comments and insights that God has given to different ones in the reading already. So if you would like to do it online and haven't gotten connected up yet, uh, let me know. And uh, Don Rosie, one of our elders who's in, in charge of this, he will get you connected up uh, immediately. And that, and you can en enjoy the uh, the fun of reading together as well. Others of you uh, reading through in your in your Bibles on your own that way and so forth. There's a a reading guide in the bulletin as well as the Herald and also on our church website as well, so you can uh, keep track as well and, and read in, in conjunction that way together. Uh, two weeks from today is our church, our congregational annual meeting, and where two things will be taking place. One is the election of new officers for the church council, the uh, positions that uh, will be open. And then the second is, and you should have received a letter about this as well, and it's printed in the bulletin, uh, the council is proposing an amendment to our constitution um, that the elders have put together that gives biblical direction for addressing and resolving any concerns in the church body in, in a godly scriptural way. And so you can read through that as well, too, but that amendment is being proposed, and that will be voted on at the annual meeting. A word about our call committee. Our call committee has been diligently at work. They're meeting again this week. Uh, they also met with Pastor Mobley when he was here to pick his brain a little bit. And so we'll just be praying for that committee as they continue to move forward in, in uh, interviewing candidates and, and so forth. And then uh, everything is, is coming uh, back here now uh, with the uh, beginning of the new year, Journey Through the Word, Confirmation, uh, the choirs, everything, kids' time. Uh, so this Wednesday will be a full season here at church. Please uh, re-engage on some of those after we've had a couple-week break as well. And then looking ahead, Vicar has about 10 days between, before he and Allie leave for the Midwest, and he'll be having his series of interviews with the uh, committees and so forth there at headquarters and uh, to be approved for ordination and for, for call, to be able to be called to a, to a church, to pastor. 
Then also, please be in prayer for Judy Boyd, who is back in the hospital, but but doing better. She's at St. Clair. And Shirley Sheetsley, who is on hospice care. She's at home, but on hospice care. So please pray for her and the family as they have, uh, some of them have gathered as well here now. Uh, happy birthday this week, John Bender. Great to see you this morning. 93 this week. Ollie Riefenbach, 93 this week. And Gene Cook, 93 this week. 93 is the age for, for this week. So uh, happy birthday to, to those uh, three 90-plus individuals as well. Today is Holy Communion Sunday, as you know, and we invite all to the Lord's table who are baptized uh, Christians in, in the Lord that way. You need not be uh, members of, of Ruth for Lutheran Church, but you do need to be a member of the family of God, trusting in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And recognizing that Jesus comes to us in, with, and under the bread and the wine as he presents himself to us. And so we would invite you uh, to come then to the communion rail at that time. The rest of the announcements very clear. Let you read those on your own and call upon the senior choir to share with us at this time for the glory of the Lord.
Our scriptures have been read in their entirety already by Pastor, but I want to reread our theme verses for today from Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Let's pray. God, we want to thank you this morning that even though your thoughts are so much higher than ours, and your ways are so much higher than our ways, Lord, you make your thoughts and your ways known to us through your word. God, we thank you for giving us your word, and I pray that you would speak to us through that word and change our hearts today, God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I grew up in a house of lists. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. My mom was a list maker. There were always lists around our house, everywhere you looked. There were grocery lists, shopping lists, chore lists, to-do lists, prayer lists, lists of correspondence. I can see her even cursive writing all around the house, even now, on scraps of paper and on post-it notes. Some of you might be able to relate. Anytime you're stressed, anytime you need to do anything, you make a list. Whenever I was overwhelmed as a kid, my mom would sit down and say, Brian, let's make a list. Let's get everything down in writing so we can see it all plainly. We'd go to the grocery store, and I'd want frosted animal crackers or something. And, but I figured, well, it wasn't on the list, so I'm not going to get it today. But Mom, she would smile at me and show me her list, and it would say, Snack for Brian, and I'd go grab them. So lists, you know, they're great. They help us organize our lives. They get the spattering of, our ide- of ideas that are all around our head kind of in order and um, help us get a, get a permanent look at something and to process things we have to do, where we have to be. They give us a sense of a goal and a destination, a stopping place so that we can have the satisfaction of having a job well done, or at least, at the very least, we can gauge our progress and how far we made. I'm sure that this time of year, many of you have been making lists, maybe goals, resolutions for 2020, little mini destinations in your head about where you want to end up with this year, places you want to go or things to do, or maybe lifestyle changes that you want to change or make. Now, of course, the danger in making lists is that if you're not disciplined, at the end of the day, if you don't finish that list, all it is is a reminder of your shortcomings, of what you did wrong. It's a running log of everything you intended to do and didn't. Now, we don't have to think too long to recollect things in our lives that maybe we've intended to do and never got around to doing or that we've put off for too long or maybe where we've seen others fall short in their obligations. Sometimes I find we're not so resolute with our resolutions. So this new year, I have something that I want you all to consider, something to think about. As you're setting your goals, as you make your lists or your plans for the next weeks and months, as you're just thinking ahead, I want you to think about From what source or from what starting place are you going from to plan your life? In our text this morning, the prophet Isaiah tells us of the one who makes perfect lists, the one who carries them out to completion and fulfills all his resolutions. He doesn't fail. He doesn't come short. At New Year's, our own planning and list-making and resolutions only have as much value as they conform to the perfect list maker, the perfect one in resolutions, God. And as long as our plans conform to his, that's how good they are. So what then characterizes God's plans? As we study Isaiah's text this morning, first off, we're going to see with God's plans that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Secondly, we're going to look at how his thoughts are revealed then through his word in power. And thirdly, we're going to look at how God carries out his exact plans to completion and perfection. So starting out, looking at the thoughts, as, at our thoughts and at God's thoughts. Isaiah writes, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. When my mom and I would go shopping, my thoughts and my ways were very different than my mother's thoughts and her ways. My thoughts centered around myself and the immediate desires that I felt in my stomach at the time. 
In my plans, groceries that week would include pizza and ice cream and those frosted animal crackers that I was looking for. And my shopping list was even shorter, probably just Legos and computer games. That's all I really need. Now, it's easy, maybe, to see the silliness of the list that I was making as a kid. I would not have a very healthy childhood living on ice cream, and I think my family would go destitute if my parents bought me every Lego set that I ever wanted. But I want us to consider, isn't that really how our thoughts work? Isn't that just our way? We see our immediate desires and what we want right now and the short-term needs that we have, And we demand these things from God. Now, we don't necessarily formally request these things. We don't necessarily pray to God and say, Lord, I want this thing that, you know, I I really don't need. It may not be a formal thing like that. But in our heart of hearts, there are things that we have a burning desire for, that we know we don't need or that we shouldn't want. But like a wise and discerning mother... Our Father in heaven knows what we need. He knows far better what we need even than we do. He knows our needs before we even know what those needs are. His thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are different than our ways. So does this mean, then, that there's no point in planning for the future, in making resolutions? Should we just discard our lists? Should we just throw up our hands in the air when it comes to prayer and growth and looking ahead And just say, whatever will be, will be. Que sera, sera, like Doris Day told us. No, on the contrary. Scripture tells us all over the place that we are to be ready. That we're to prepare ourselves and to plan. Jesus says in Luke 14, For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish All who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. We are supposed to plan ahead. We are to make lists. But what I want to make known today is that we have to acknowledge that God has ultimate control and wisdom in our lives, and we are to subject all of our decision-making to him and to his word. Some of you might know the Bible verse I'm about to say by heart. It's Proverbs 16.9. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Only God has the power to carry out his plans for us, and only the plans we have that conform to his will for us will come to anything. Isaiah illustrates this in our next verses of our sermon text. He says, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. God is telling us here that his words have power. This makes me think of a line that gets thrown around a lot, especially in political circles. People like to say, talk is cheap. What they mean by that is people don't want rhetoric. It's easy to say something. It's harder to do it, right? People don't want to hear weak speeches that have no truth or anything to back them up. Well, we do not worship a God whose talk is cheap. We don't worship a God who's just merely words. He is as good as his word. Just like rain and dew do not just fall, but they carry out an action, a purpose that God wills. They water the ground and they bring life. They cause growth. So too, then, God's word goes forth in action with a purpose. Some of you, as Pastor was saying in our announcements today, are doing the Year in a Bible Challenge. Um, If you would like to do that, it's not too late. You can always sign up. We'd love to have you join us. In our first reading that we looked at, we started at the very beginning of the Bible, the very beginning of God's Word, Genesis 1, which is a perfect example of how we see God's Word in action. God spoke in the beginning, and things happened. God spoke creation into existence, and he said, Let there be light. And light was. God said, let us form man in our own image. And Adam was created out of the dust of the earth. When God makes a list, when God makes a resolution, his saying it, his word, is the same as doing it. God acting through his word is then best illustrated in 
the Word, God's Word, becoming flesh, which we celebrated over Advent and Christmas. Jesus Christ, the Word of God incarnate, made into flesh, came into a world of people whose thoughts were not as high as God's thoughts, whose ways were absolutely not God's ways. But God's higher way, the way, Jesus Christ, came down from his lofty place where he was higher than we were, and he dwelt among us as a man. And God's plan for his son Jesus was that he would die on a cross for our sins, for all the times that we've fallen short, dying for our shortcomings of perfection. And he rose again from the dead. Jesus ascended into heaven, as we just confessed moments ago. So while we look into 2020, we make our resolutions, we make our lists, we make our plans, we look ahead. These plans which sometimes go the way we want, and sometimes not, we look then to the word of God, our Bible, which has power to actually affect change, power to bring life like the spring rains. This is why our church has been pursuing this reading the Bible this year. And we encourage everyone to read their Bibles in some consistent way. The reason is we live in a world where few people actually believe that God is the master of our world. And so few people believe that God's word actually speaks to us today in power, that God's word actually has power. A lot of people don't believe that. A lot of Christians don't believe that today. But God absolutely does speak to us through his word. Holy Scripture, our Bible, was written through the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit, and through it, God works in power in all the souls of those who read it. So every time you pick up your Bible and you read the words printed in there, you are who Isaiah calls a sower who receives his seed. You are, then, the eater who receives his bread, because you are being a recipient of God's word. As God worked through his pronounced words in creation, and through his Son, the Word made flesh, he now speaks to us through Scripture. And this is not anything of our own doing, this work that he's doing. It is God's gift to us. A transformation happens within us as we read and hear God's Word. God's Spirit begins to work faith in us, works repentance in our hearts. The Spirit then causes the Word of God incarnate Jesus Christ, to save us from our sin and make us righteous before God. The beauty, then, of being a Christian is that we are no longer powerless in our resolutions and our list-making and our planning. We're not powerless as we look ahead to our futures. As we seek the Lord through his word, we participate, actually, in God's carrying out his plan for us. As we read God's word daily, our desires become more like God's desires. Our thoughts become more like his thoughts, which are so much higher than ours. Our ways become more like his ways. Now that is a supernatural miracle that happens through reading God's word. We are changed. It's nothing we can affect ourselves. This is what Paul is actually getting at when he's talking about no longer conforming to the patterns of the world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is that renewing? planning and making resolutions according to God's word, God's word coming through in your life, seeing the world as God sees it more and more each day. When we are influenced and we are subjected to God's word, our lists and our plans and the resolutions that we make have a purpose that God carries out with us. Isaiah says at the end of our text that God's word does not return to God empty, but it shall accomplish that which he purposes and succeeds in that thing for which he sent it. This new year, God has plans for each and every one of you. He does. God has resolutions that he's already put down. Resolutions that won't be phased out as the year progresses, like gym memberships that we forget about. And you're all invited to participate in God's plans for you through his word this year and all years. When I was a kid, I would look at my mom's grocery or her shopping list, and I'd imagine what my own list would look like. As we look at this new year, we may have our own ideas of what God's list for us should look like, 
what we think he should plan for us. But we don't ever, obviously, know his full plans for our lives. But we are guaranteed, through God's word, that God will accomplish what he purposes for us and for the world. And we see through his word that God has accomplished, actually, his plans already. God's list for us has already been checked off. The work of Christ is already done. We who frantically seek to improve ourselves and make ourselves better and to do all of these things in the new year with our resolutions, we can rest in the accomplished work of Jesus Christ. Through the blood of Jesus, God's word in action, there is already resolution for this new year. They're God's resolutions. You are already sufficient. You are already enough. You're already made clean. You are already beautiful in the eyes of your creator. Yes, through Jesus, all our improvements that we seek have been carried out. Because God says so. And God is as good as his word. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Lord, we acknowledge today all the ways that you bless us through your word, through your son. And Lord, we also acknowledge how you bless us through the gifts that you give us, Lord, which we return to you a portion of in our tithes and our offerings. We pray that you'd use these gifts to extend your kingdom, both here in Bethel Park and beyond, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I invite the congregation to please rise for our communion service, which is printed in your bulletins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. And now we praise you that you did send unto us your only begotten Son, and that in him, being found in fashion as a man, you did reveal the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup. After he had supped and after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Please come forward under the direction of our ushers.
I invite the congregation to please stand as you're able as we sing our Nunc Dimittis. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this, your salutary gift, and we beseech you of your mercy to strengthen us through the same gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. And Lord, we also lift up to you today those we know are hurting or in need of healing, Lord. We think of Judy Boyd and Shirley Sheetsley especially. Lord, I pray that you would give them strength and be with them today. We pray these things through Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, your dear Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.